So with that information, Cannon has just um, pulled up. He can now with a push of a button start generating trend reports. So this goes into helping make decisions better. So for example, if uh, Dr. Tim Aker's interest, area of interest is food security, uh, we could then look across what's in the system in terms of other researchers working on food security across uh, institutions around the world, across the HBCUs. We could look across what's flowing through the global pipeline of, of innovation around food security, coming from research, basic research, advanced applied research, through to patents and into startups, into corporations. We can also run it across um, all the calls, RFPs, RFIs, all the requests for proposals, grants that are coming from the US government across the federal agencies, across the five development banks, including the World Bank, across the EU. So we can run this through, start generating opportunities to form teaming partnerships to go after additional research money. And we can then also rank how competitive a, a, a proposed teaming arrangement would be. And then how to add additional assets to make it even more competitive. Okay, Kenan. Yeah, so here I just took that list of those 1700 startups focused on applying AI and ag tech in some way or another. And I created a trend chart for it. And these are interactive. And so we can start isolating different variables. So we can look at things here with kind of this teal color uh, startup creation and compare that to in the blue color here acquisitions. So this can help us, you know, with decision making in terms of build versus buy. Uh, should we look to acquire a company or should we build it internally? Um, if acquisitions are up and creations down, you know, we can make the assumption we're going to be overpaying for a startup. The best ones have already been acquired. You know, maybe it's better to, to build internally. We can also look at things like funding rounds uh, versus dollars raised. This can help us uh, understand where are we in the cycle of innovation for a specific technology. Uh, this is often cyclical. So we'll see times where there'll be high number of funding rounds with low dollar amounts. And that typically means we're in experimentation phase. So there's a lot of small checks being written to a bunch of different startups to, to try new things. And that'll happen for a couple of years. And then eventually we'll kind of see it invert to where the funding round count goes down, but the dollars raised increases. And there we know, okay, from that experimentation phase, there's a handful of winners. Most of the money is gonna be going to, you know, a smaller number of startups at this point. And again, that's a cyclical process. We'll kind of see that happen over and over again. And then we can also look at things like exit strategy. So we can look at IPOs versus acquisitions, compare that to what's private, and we can see what, what companies are trying to do. We can do similar trends with different data types, with research papers, patents, um, RFPs, et cetera, uh, with this process. And then we can also heat map. So we can geographically plot where in the world, which regions are producing technology, you know, commercializing it with startups, with SMEs, um, who's doing the research and the patenting of that research. And oftentimes too, we'll see disparities between that. So there might be a region that's very good at research and patenting, uh, but they're not strong in commercializing. And vice versa, we'll see a region that's strong in commercializing, but not necessarily the research and the patenting. And so from there, we can start looking for supply and demand opportunities. You know, where can we source technology from? And then in market, where is the demand to take that technology to? So there's some of the other things that, that our platform can, can help us solve for.